since I've never been on this um, app, why don't we first start with what the friend app is and, you know, who uses it and just a basic high level overview. Cool. So friend is an audio dating app for Bharat users. Now Bharat is a colloquial term. Broadly, it refers to the next million users. You'll find these users in Thai two, Thai three cities. They came to internet primarily after the geo thing happened in 2016. And this is the segment for which a lot of uh, internet building is happening right now. So you have social media, their social media is represented more by apps like ShareChat, Moj, TikTok. That is basically the phenomena which happened in the last three to four years. And beyond India also, you will find these next billion users in a lot of places. You'll find them in South Asia. You'll find them in MENA region. So that is the broad user base. Sure. Now what happens over friend is uh, it's a matchmaking uh, app, matchmaking app in the sense that uh, Whenever a user comes to friend, they are taken to a matchmaker and matchmaker breaks size between two strangers through various games. What kind of games? Raja Rani Chorpul is a traditional uh, Indian game, which we all must have played in our childhood yeah. games, like um, ice breaking games, like, you know, in house parties, you have two truths and a lie, as yeah. well as games like Ludo, Karam, etc. So that is basically the premise to uh, help people who are shy to, you know, find a match if uh, the guy and a girl agree that, you know, they like each other, they move into a one-on-one conversation and this matchmaker is free to basically help other folks uh, to break ice between them. Now, this matchmaker is a human being and uh, these matchmakers come from our user base. So let's say they are micro key opinion leaders from the user base. And uh, the second thing is that this all happens over audio streaming without any real picture. So we created an AI generated Avta where you can understand attributes of uh, the other person, but you won't actually see the face of uh, the boy and a girl. And secondly, this is a public date. So, you know, people can also watch it uh, online that, okay, this is a blind date happening and this is also sort of a content which can be consumed. So right. that's broadly what happens in friend. Over time, uh, we started with this matchmaking thing, but it's an ecosystem. It's, mm-hmm. it's an ecosystem where there are a lot of serendipitous uh, moments where people can, you know, match with someone. So consider it as a college festival or a college mm-hmm. picnic where mm-hmm. there are a lot of events happening and well. uh, people can find their match through you know a lot of activities so it can be games it can be matchmaker moderated dates it can be one-on-one robo matches so on and so forth it can also be you know a social feed where people are able to consume content and identify that okay this person sounds like me why not i chat and see you know how it goes so that's not like strictly metaverse but yeah it's sort of a universe in itself where you can you know go and have a conversation make friends and if you really like someone, go have a one-on-one chat or a date. So that's broadly what is friend. Got it. Understood. Like before we get into the details of how things work, etc., just give me a high-level overview of if I go sign up on friend today, me, a girl, goes and signs up, what happens? What do I have to do to be able mm-hmm. to talk to someone? Do I find the matchmaker? Do I find the game? Like how do I connect with another person? Right. So first of all, you create your profile mm-hmm. and uh, you fill in the basic details. What's your name? Uh, what's your age? Mm-hmm. Um, we have a very interesting uh, gender detection uh, method. What we do is we have a famous movie dialogue when you make your profile that you speak in your uh, voice to identify mm-hmm. whether you are a boy or a girl. And there is a AIML algorithm, which broadly, uh, you know, identifies your gender. That is because uh, it's a pseudo anonymous platform, but even then you require some sense of what kind of, uh, you know, person you are about to talk to. Now, on the basis of these uh, parameters, uh, we have matching algorithms, which will assign you a matchmaker as well as they will assign you uh, 
partner to have a first conversation with now this matchmaker will nudge your conversation make you comfortable will tell you you know what happens on friend and over this 5 minute date mm-hmm. uh, you will identify whether you match with this person or not it is also an entertaining activity per se entertaining activity in the sense that you know even if you don't want to date you want to just make friends mm. uh, you can come and you know play this game so it's an entertainment for Got any it. user got it then if you really hit it off with this person go into a one on one setting if not you can go to another matchmaker or you know play again the same game with this matchmaker so on and so forth so that's broadly like in very short what happens within first 5 minutes of installing it got it so it's like an instantaneous thing or does it happen at a particular time of the day or like something like that so i, I just log into your app create a profile and then i can find a matchmaker and a match so yeah i mean uh, it happens instantaneously you need not you know go through a lot of profiles we will suggest yeah. okay this is the uh, you know we feel this is the right profile as a well, right matchmaker for you why not you try it out got it got it but like people also have the option to say hey no not right now but i'll do it later or something right yeah of course okay. of course <laughs> got of it course. got it okay cool tell me what like what is the equivalent of this because this sounds quite uh, complex right like there is so much happening are there apps that are similar to yours like uh, who would be your competitors in this space there is no competitor in terms of uh, you know similar app per se mm-hmm. because and i think that is the reason that's the secret sauce that we built this in a way that uh, we are utilizing real user insights and that's why we do not find a clear cut parallel and the reason for that is when we started building this whole product we knew that a lot of people have taken attempts in this segment mm. but no one is able to actually scale a product or build a meaningful engagement uh, because uh, they are not utilizing user insights from ground up and mm-hmm. that's why if you ask okay what's the parallel there is no parallel but mm. in the real world you will find a lot of parallels so for example if you talk about indian matchmaking mm. there is always someone very excited in to cut late in the family who introduces uh, two people who who makes the matches right. when we go to college there is always this group dating thing happening where you first sure. befriend someone and then you convey your feelings and there's always that common friend who acts as the ice breaker same thing happens same thing used to happen in internet world in the early 2000s where you used right. to have these yahoo or could chat yeah. rooms yeah. so there is no direct parallel in terms of okay so for example like tinder and bumble are very similar to each other yeah. you can say okay there is some differentiators and then a bumble was created it came first but if you ask there is nothing such for friend but in real world you can find a lot of parallels Got okay it. that same Got thing it. keeps on happening so we took a lot of learning from that real world behavior and tried to replicate it online got it understood that makes sense tell me why you decided to focus on tier 2 tier 3 like because a lot of the dating apps are actually built for metro first and you know they're trying to prove it works at a premium niche level and then they sort of you know try to expand why do you guys choose to in some sense go mass market first um mm-hmm. you know what why what was the inspiration behind that so the inspiration was uh, very simple that this is the largest market to go to mm. and uh, even before you know identifying this is the problem statement we want to work with the first thing we identified was that we want to create a social interaction platform for the mass market because when we started this was around 2019 me mm-hmm. hardik and harsh who are my co-founders mm-hmm. we understood that a lot of content play is happening for the mass market by content right. play we mean you can go on youtube share chat tiktok etc yeah. much in today's uh, yeah. context and you consume a lot of content Correct. but there will be some time where people will actually be uh ready to interact with each other now why okay. i say this is a bit theoretical and when internet came for the taiwan users in around 2000 mm-hmm. streaming was not that great content yeah. delivery was not that great and yeah. uh, hence very quickly people moved to interaction they started using yahoo reddit or quote etc for interacting with other strangers yeah. on the internet but 
2016, Jio actually offered really good content delivery. And hence, you see in the ecosystem, a lot of content problems were solved Correct. first. Correct. And also content is a passive thing. You don't require active engagement from each and every user. So that scaled very quickly. Right. Now, next step is that all these people on internet would want to make connections. And right. uh, there is a network, Facebook and WhatsApp, which are closed social networks. Closed social networks, you know people in your real life and then you add them on WhatsApp as well as on Facebook. But then who is solving for open social or social discovery of friends mm. or potential mates, etc. And that is the segment where we wanted to build for. What we realized over time is that the zero use case or the most pressing need is that I want to talk to the opposite gender because okay. that is something which is not happening in uh, real world in India in tie to tie three cities. There's mm. still difficulty, you know, for going out, yeah. grabbing a coffee, which is very common behavior in Taiwan. So sure. I come from Kota, uh, which is a tie to city famous for Kuchi. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hardik, my co-founder, is also from Kota, and Harsh is from Abu Road. Abu Road is a small town at the foothill of Mount Abu, which is Correct. a station in Rajasthan. Mm-hmm. And we have seen this happening, uh, you know, all our lives uh, in school, etc. It's not that easy to actually, you know, have a chat with the opposite gender, uh, particularly in a setting like a cafe, etc. Yeah. So we start that with the premise that there has to be public stoa. Or a public yeah. platform where the first problem to solve for is that boys and girls are actually getting to chat with each other, and eventually we will solve for everything else over and over. So that Got was it. the broad premise as to how we started with this market. And the second thing was we r- realized that uh, apart from market size, a lot of the problem was solved mm. through uh, dating apps or interaction apps for Taiwan right. users, and hence we did not want to reinvent the wheel. So that's the reason we naturally focused on the next billion users. Got it. Interesting. And so, from that perspective, you know, you don't have to go into the numbers if you're not comfortable. But like, what is the kind of gender ratio that you have on this platform? Obviously, you're making it a little bit safer for women by making it audio only, and probably there's like less discomfort, right? Mm-hmm. Given that, what does the gender ratio look like on print? So gender ratio, I think, at scale for all platforms, it's not just friend. You take any social, will be around you know twenty twenty five percent is yeah, to eighty or seventy five percent because yeah. that is the ratio of uh, or representation on internet, yeah. on the, the mass market internet, right? So that's broadly what you see on friend, and uh, yep, that's what. Got it. And how does it work? Is it just twenty five percent of the women talking to the other seventy five percent of the men, or like you know, how do you ensure that the women are not getting bored, and how do you ensure that you know you keep you know you retain those women, right? So I think in the sense this happens, uh, this is a very mathematical problem to solve. and this puts uh, women in a position that they can choose from a larger pool as compared to let's say men on the internet so we are not restricting ourselves to one is to one ecosystem where you know a particular person a boy chats with a girl we want to sort of make an ecosystem or a community because if let's say in a community you have even 20 25% ratio people uh, you know get to interact from both the sides so for example what happens uh if you interact with a significant number of people over the internet it sort of increases the probability of you finding the right match yeah and uh, that is precisely what happens in a community or sort of a group interaction that if you make 3 5 6 people interact with each other With this gender ratio, let's say twenty, thirty percent, thirty-five percent, it actually helps in both the sides finding the right matches. So the pitch is that you know rather than spending a lot of time in let's say a one-on-one interaction, which I think Taiwan does in uh, the dating apps, why not have a group sort of approach and yeah. maybe find a better match? Plus, there is also a context in terms of. Uh, why we named it friend 
we named it friend because we feel that the first thing users yeah. will be coming onto the internet is to you know find a good person to talk to yeah a friend to talk to because yeah. if you have a look in uh, the next really new segment it's a very common thing to say mujhse friendship karoge ya mujhse friendship yeah. karoge people yeah. still are not very comfortable with the concept ki no we want to go on a date ya hum right. date pe gaye it's more right. ki this is my online friend uh, right. i talk to this person in the evening i share how my day went so on and so forth and all these group interactions actually help you find probably you know very good five to six friends out of which you can you know have a choice that okay one of these is my very very special friend with which i can probably have a, a dating sort of a interaction later on so Got this it. is broadly how you know the user thinks about the product and hence the whole approach of friend and why there's a lot of focus on community or group interactions rather than the one on one approach which you see most of the times over Got it. Got it. that's that's super clever right like in some sense you are creating an interesting different experience where you're saying hey this is friendship and if something else comes out of it wonderful but you're still calling it a dating app which is almost like a great bait for people to come onto the platform in the first place right yeah the engagement it, it and the retention is happening through the experience yep so we also see it as a friend discovery platform mm-hmm. and uh, when we build it out we focus on that arena as well but still i mean there is differences there are nuances to the whole dating or matchmaking interaction and we also encompass that so let's say you know people come here for uh, a very specific focus in the mind that they will find a good match and then they stay the liquidity is there on the platform because there are so many good social activities to be done with other people right in the journey you make friends and because you have so much liquidity yeah. on the platform you yeah. are able to suggest good matches or you are able to increase the probability or the serendipity of someone to meet the right person got it interesting so actually you let me give an interesting question how how is it that you're maintaining good liquidity when you say that's good liquidity are you saying this because people share this interest for the games that they play or like how are you saying that's good liquidity because we're still talking about like there is something to do beyond you know uh, just coming and viewing profiles yeah so okay. in most of most of the cases you go you just you know indicate your preference then you get to see the profiles that is how sort of this thing has happened in the last 20 30 years according to me uh, i can see a lot of uh, switch which is happening globally towards systems which are more interactive you have something to do in the product you are basically living a second life on these yeah. internet apps and ecosystem and i think that's a very simple reason why you have more liquidity because people come and they have something to do they actually have real interaction to do because in my observation that is how dating or you know making friends happen in real life you go you yeah, talk through experience you just through, yeah yes exactly uh, so that's the simple answer got it got it so give me a little bit of back story as to why you guys built this app or like you know obviously i get the whole business scenario of okay now you have good internet contents a big thing and you know this problem is not solved but from a personal standpoint what was mm-hmm. your individual story is and why did you say hey let's do this um i think uh, 2012 when uh, i was in my 12th standard i had this back of my mind that uh, i want to become an entrepreneur mm-hmm. and uh, anything else in terms of graduation is sort of a stepping stone fast forward to iit kanpur there was a lot of uh, things happening around 2014 2015 and uh, we got exposed to okay there is something called entrepreneurship where you create things mm-hmm. so almost all engineers have this uh, you know sort of keeda to create things to see things you know working being used mm-hmm. and uh, there i met my now co-founders and then friends so my co-founder harsh was my roommate from uh, day one and we have lived almost four years together and post that in as flatmates in mumbai as well mm-hmm. my another co-founder hardik 
uh, used to study with me in Kota in Kochi, okay. and we knew each other from ninth standard. Got and it. he used to live right right across the other room in IIT Kanpur. So yeah, this is sort of luck that we ended up together over the journey in IIT Kanpur. We realized we really like these. um building product per se so we used to do a lot of things within the campus like creating uh, media body of iit kanpur working mm-hmm. on projects where we are actually creating something of utility and uh, post that we moved our different ways in 2016 mm-hmm. so harsh moved to a product management role he was working with atm Mm-hmm. Hardik was working with uh, Worldcon, which is a hedge fund. He wanted to be deep in tech, and wanted to go to higher studies. I went to Deutsche Bank uh, mm-hmm. for investment banking. Mm-hmm. We had this back of our mind that you know someday we will basically uh, quit our jobs and do something, build something. We will take right. that risk, but uh, we were still not fixated on what will be the tipping point, and hence we mm-hmm. joined our regular jobs. The same story continued. We lived together for some time again in uh, Mumbai. So mm-hmm. I spent one year at Deutsche. I had also interned at the same place. Mm-hmm. Even before joining Deutsche, I knew that you know I'll leave very quickly right. because I want right. to do something of my own. So yeah. when that uh, one year thing happened, I put in my papers. I had decent uh, savings to sort of live on my own, and I went for a gap year. So Got one it. year is I took as gap. I read books, I traveled, and uh, I worked on different problem statements with Harsh and Hardik. Around 2018 uh, September, we decided that you know, uh, until and unless every one quits their job, nothing is going to happen because right. we'll always have the cushion of the jobs. Yeah. And uh, fortunately, both these guys understood Harsh and Hardik understood they quit their jobs. and we moved with on the premise that we are a very good team Got so it. hardik was good in tech he had some product background i can take care of everything else and he said that okay the team is there let's move uh, and right. we'll figure out how this happens right and uh, we moved to bangalore because it was cheap as well as there was sort of ecosystem here ecosystem in the sense that a lot of it kanpur founders had right. raised funds and they were our first mentors in that right. sense and right. with the idea that uh, we want to work uh, on good products so probably sure. social is something we'll be very good at sure. and uh, we have this unique ability of shipping products very fast so we can think right. of a thesis we can build something for 15 days uh, launch it test and basically do one experiment in a month and yeah. probably after 5 or 6 months we will get an understanding of what is to be built yeah. so that is the thought process we had and uh, i mean today when you listen it may make sense that oh yeah they were so methodical theoretical but there were a lot of uncertainties when we were actually doing it yeah. it's very yeah. easy to connect the dots in the hindsight but yeah i mean the fundamental thing which always helps is having a complementary skill set and a good team and when uh-huh. we started building product we were first building something uh, reddit for bharat Okay. where we thought that you know there is no curated group so we had this understanding that interaction is something which we want to touch upon and we want to experiment right. so we created a app called hum it was mm-hmm. hum so mm-hmm. hum app it's a community there were different communities in that and uh, people will you know have a discussion on different things it may yeah. be utilitarian so on and so forth but we will see when we actually did this for a month or so we realized that the pressing need is romance for the mass market <laughs> was, and <laughs> was it for you guys or was it for the mass market who needed the romance first so for if you want to ask a personal ask i think all of us had spent a significant amount of time on internet chatting with the opposite gender right. and we knew that okay this thing actually works this right. thing actually has worked for us in the past but right. this problem is largely solved for taiwan users right for other users there is actually no one which has solved it so it is also a white space so Got from it. a personal understanding it was not a motivation that you know we will get to date but mm-hmm. the, it was an understanding that actually internet is the future for right. all these kind of interactions because i think tinder first came to india in around 2014 15 yeah. where we were the first users of it even before that every one of us had experienced google chat yeah. uh, google yeah. gtalk used to be there 
Correct. At that point of time, around 2010, 2012. So yeah. every one of us had that understanding that okay, this is how the future of interaction should be. We have experienced it firsthand, but this is a vacant space where this is not available. So I think that is what the push was in terms of belief that you know this can exist because until these all these things look very obvious in my sight that oh there would have existed a Facebook or Instagram or a Snapchat but at the time when you are just at the cusp of making that uh, sort of a revolution it's not that easy until and unless you actually have experienced it firsthand and uh, that is what the background uh, story Got was it. which helped us. Got it. I, I'm curious to understand where you said you know you guys tried all of these apps, but you know this hasn't been solved for tier two, tier three. Yeah. Can you name like one or two big differences you found in terms of your experiences dating in a tier one space using one of these tier one apps versus how people experience mm. friend in so, tier two? So one key difference is people don't uh, readily post pictures. in uh, a city like kota mm-hmm. uh, they will post uh, everyone will post their picture or make a profile in let's say mumbai or delhi mm-hmm. or bangalore but uh, there will be very few profiles in small towns like kota abu road mm. uh, so that was the first difference that in mass market uh, particularly this is more from the women side that yeah. for privacy for social stigma they would not want to post their pictures online and we did this research on a lot of other social platforms as well mm-hmm. facebook as well as uh, you know share chat and we realized that people are not actually posting their photographs like we do in uh, mumbai delhi bangalore so that's yeah. the first key differentiator the second differentiator is uh, people need ice breaking people mm. want to uh, understand okay what is the right dating behavior or sort of they would want a uh, you know assistance in the term of a wingmate right you need to have a wingmate in order to you know help in terms of what should be the first message at what time uh, you should you know yeah be more honest or more clear so on and so forth more honest in terms of that you are looking for uh, a date etc how to ask out so all these things are very very ubiquitous in urban culture yeah. urban culture as in we grow up seeing yeah. movies we see a lot of tv series so we yeah. are very comfortable and right. both sides are comfortable even mm. a guy is comfortable as well as a girl is comfortable yeah but when you talk about uh, the mass market that isn't very strongly established yet Yeah, and one of the primary reason is that people don't talk that much. It's uh, the society is not that open that you know they right. ready interaction when you are going to school or college. So that is a very key difference that people require a wingman or a wingwoman to it. help them in this interaction. Got it. Uh, and third is all of these mediums. If you look at the vibe, like you should have very good pictures. You should be very yeah. polished and. Yeah. Uh, uh there is you know a very distinct vibe with the urban culture so i don't think these apps actually had that cultural context right. so this cultural context really works well for uh the urban user because urban india does what a uk or a us uh, citizen does for example right. our favorite brands are nike adidas we will follow michael jordan even yeah. though we very few people would have seen him playing in yeah. real life yeah. but we won't we are a brand called wrong which is by virat kohli <laughs> but when you look at the mass market virat kohli is the you know superstar and he right. actually is followed by so many people so that is a very big difference that yeah. and i think uh, there are very uh, subtle nuances which actually yeah. differentiate this culture so that is the reason why these products didn't work out in the mass market that is and, so and uh, hence you yeah no it's a, it's a, something else yeah it's a really interesting point that you make right like the product didn't translate culturally to tier 2 and tier 3 cities which is where the size of india matters for an international company right like if you are present in india it's because india has that size 
but if you don't translate culturally then you it's a lost opportunity right um i'm guessing something like a truly madly is also an app that focuses on tier 2 tier 3 cities what how is do you know if your users would use even this platform or like what their opinion about a comparable tier 2 tier 3 dating app would be so my sense is see, a user will always use multiple platforms yeah right but uh, there will be platforms they will open daily mm-hmm. versus there will be platforms they'll open weekly versus something they'll use probably once in a lifetime so shaadi.com is something people will use once in a lifetime uh there will be things like you know which you mentioned truly madly at the trap people may use once in a month once in a week but friend is uh, a platform where people will come daily that is right. how we think about it right now apart from this difference i feel uh, see you need to actually revolutionize product yeah you cannot have a very simple differentiation from an existing player and say that you know we are a totally different player because right so for example tinder and bumble are more or less similar products but they were very and this is i'm not uh, saying from a user's perspective yeah this is i am saying from a builder's perspective right that overall if you see at a meta level they are the same product why is it same product they are picture first Yeah. So the revolution here will be that you know we are not picture first, and yeah. that is the secret sauce which basically creates a totally different category. And you are not actually competing with all these platforms because it is a totally different sure. way of uh, meeting the other person. Here you are focusing more on the interaction uh, rather than you know how a person actually looks, and Absolutely. it works both ways because the grooming question is not that high yet. Yeah. Okay. point b people are not comfortable posting pictures sure. so that is uh, how you sort of increase your user base or you increase Correct. your utility because if you in- basically you are reducing the friction for someone to Absolutely. come to platform, yeah platform, yeah right yeah. the more uh, barriers you put in terms of pictures in terms of cultural context you will have less and less people so see every app which is good enough will find users on the platform yeah. but here yeah. we will in let's say 5 or 10 years we will get to know okay which is a platform which is actually scaled and has become very ubiquitous yeah. for uh, the masses so yeah. i feel for example the last revolution yeah. in uh, romantic interaction was let's introduce uh, uh, you know clicking and uh, posting pictures for a dating profile and uh, people will use it that invention is 10 years old that yeah. happened in 2011 2012 yeah swiping the next the next revolution will be okay uh, how to have live interactions on the internet how to create environment or systems where these interactions can happen and how can technology enable us to do better match making and create these safe spaces so i think the problem statement to solve is much tougher now but that is actually what is required you actually are giving people real world experiences over internet so my sense is that all the platforms there was a phase where you had photo first platforms where you create profile and new match there'll be a next set of platforms in this ticket next ticket where you will actually have a deeper form of interaction and then you'll identify someone to chat and a lot of these will uh resemble social networks they mm. will not be a dating app per se right where you meet and give you match and you meet in real life but it will be you match on the internet you talk mostly on the internet yeah. probably you may meet in real life so yeah. that i think is a cultural shift which is happening across so you mentioned at the start of the conversation about the chinese app or yeah. that you you will see in china there are a lot of apps similar to this Correct. where majority of the interaction is very deep and is happening online yeah. so that's my thought on you know on the players which exist right now yeah i think you mentioned few interesting things right you said the previous re- revolution was essentially about social discovery right where yep. they made it location based discovery where you can say hey who else is around me who's single who i can talk to but they didn't right. facilitate the interaction life right? right so 
you said it's about creating these safe spaces that's really the next step if you think about it from you know i also worked in retail apart from this so i'm i mm-hmm. actually had this analogy in my head when you were saying it's like it's like running a shop and then putting in a trial room there saying hey you looked at the clothes in our shop would you like to do a trial see if you like it and see you know if you feel good then maybe you'll buy it right so it's almost like that you're creating that safe space right there for them to have that trial in that 5 minutes or 10 minutes date and then right. there is a higher conversion of building something with that person that they meet right True. that's really True. how retail also kind of evolved and it also reduces the friction for you to be on the platform and it gives you generate a lot of data in the process which essentially help the platform curate things better for you so i think that's the game change which tiktok did yeah. over uh, content consumption that a lot of content is being consumed you leave a lot of data points the cost of uh, one interaction which you do opportunity cost is very less mm. right rather the, for example it's very simple if you watch a 10 minute video versus you watch a 15 second video the cost of having a bad experience is very less than a 15 yeah. second video yeah in the same way you see that the cost of actually you know going the full circle of matching with someone chatting probably meeting in real life it's uh, much higher as compared yeah, to yeah very you high transaction cost, you, right? yeah 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 Yeah. you have a chat with someone probably 2 minutes 5 minutes you like okay cool if you did not okay you go ahead yeah. and uh, i think that is sort of what i will say is that is the next level product engineering which is required because right. all these systems these are not systems which existed naturally yeah all of these systems are made by uh product managers and there are few choices which they make so that we have sustainable ecosystems on the internet so i think okay. the choices for a product manager will be defined probably by these principles and hence it comes under this uh, terminology called product engineering that you take choices so that these ecosystems can sustain right right got it how big would you say the company is today friend right now we are 10 people Okay. we have a very very lean team mm-hmm. uh, three founders and seven other folks distributed across broader this tech and community um, and uh, we consciously had a very lean team because uh, i think uh, it suited to iterate on this product because yeah. this product is uh, you know not something you have seen in real life so to actually come about it you have to be very lean yeah. and it impacts day to day choices as well that is mm-hmm. one and uh, the second thing is it's easier for you know communication you use technology for making things scalable keep the team lean that's also good for capital efficiency yeah and the long run in terms of yeah. making a business absolutely what cities or like what places are you big in right now so all the hindi speaking states is mm-hmm. the first place where we had uh, you know launched so we are spread across all over india i think mm-hmm. uh, in terms of uh, the percentage if you say that up has the largest population base in india so you will see that in a user base as well, got it you know? got it a lot of people will come from up so it's sort of evenly distributed and uh, right now also we are focusing on uh, Uh, the southern states the biggest languages because language is a key factor Absolutely. here which very few people have uh, uh, utilized so far so very soon we have already started doing it so mm-hmm. india is definitely uh, whole pan india we will be present there are yeah. few parts where we are not actively present right now but apart from india uh, our understanding is this concept will work even in places where there is a lot of social stigma about yeah. meeting in real life yeah so that means you will have application in middle east you will have application in uh, southeast asia south south asia southeast asia yeah. so that is uh, a big focus in our mm-hmm. minds and that is the reason why we will be soon expanding the team from 10 to 25 to 30 people that, that is it. one one more insight uh, continuation with right now we are targeting sort of next billion users mm. but um, if you open clubhouse today 
Mm-hmm. Uh, you will see there are a lot of shoot your shot rooms that uh, there is a moderator for the room. There are girls and boys, and there is someone who basically uses a pickup line. That is very similar to what we have conceptualized with friend. And mm-hmm. I feel that any ice breaking system, ice breaking systems are universal. If something mm-hmm. works for uh, next billion users, it will also work for other users or Taiwan users because. in my sense i think all the apps right now they are good basic apps they are great for utility but uh, users are very imaginative mm. they would want to use you know sort of uh, how we say in hindi the word is adbhut mm. in english it can be like marvelous systems mm-hmm. or apps and mm-hmm. uh, hence you will see that there will be um, some time in future we would also want to build for uh, a taiwan user or an urban user as well right now i think uh, we we are not focusing there because it dilutes the focus of the company you yeah. should not do all things at once but i think uh, that is also a space a wide space university where a deep interactive uh, matchmaking or a friend discovery platform should exist mm Mm. and and all of these players are coming they are these yeah. are players coming in pockets like you will have something in your hope etc but even clubhouse to certain extent gives that deeper sense of interaction uh, as compared to let's say youtube or other content apps uh, but no one has become like super big yet got it i haven't used app so far and i you know would love to download this after and like check it out but i wanted to ask you one important question um you said You, what you do well or what you're attempting to do well is to try and translate the culture into the product so that there's less of friction for people to come on and use the product right right india being such a diverse country i'm sure the culture sort of changes you know across states across regions etc how neutral is your product in that sense where it can be nimble and suit different cultures like in a sense mm-hmm. is the app itself built in a, a a language that the user chooses chooses are the games culturally sort of you know open etc how, how how is it right now and how do you plan to make sure it's culturally sensitive in some sense cool so i think one good advantage here is that uh, all these ice breaking systems or let's say games or whatever you call it are scalable across cultures so mm-hmm. ludo is popular across all india it's not that ludo is particularly uh, yeah. popular in rajasthan and not the southern yeah. states so that is one thing that uh, you create a basic infrastructure which is popular across same goes with you know systems like photo based profiling and swiping right swiping left so i think that helps in a sense that if you have come uh, if you have identified a trend in terms of uh, let's say an ice breaking system that works well for a variety of users that is what second uh when we talk about this nimbleness or suitability to a particular culture it is not just at uh, the copy of the app or the text which is used yeah. o- over the apps yeah. here but it also what kind of people you bring to the platform yeah who are the first adopters and uh, because most of the uh, friend app is run by these matchmakers or these power users if you uh, build the right community for which you will require a good community team or people right. in your organization who have that user empathy essentially your whole scale up or your community or a particular language launch will be that uh, you know rooted in the culture yeah. will be rooted in the sensibilities of that particular region Absolutely. so essentially it boils down to whether in the organization yeah. you have the nimbleness to bring or create an org where yeah. you have these cultural sensitivities for yeah. different uh, Um, you know user groups so yeah. that's what i feel in terms of correct yeah, absolutely and my question stuff. was how are you kind of are you starting to address that already or like what is the plan for that like as i think that yeah. that that has been addressed from day one so mm-hmm. i think first of all it was that there is a 
boy side of the product as well as the girl side of the product oh, okay. right when we started from day one mm-hmm. right so you think about both these uh, uh, very specifically because mm-hmm. they go hand in hand you cannot make one side lopsided so yeah. from day one we have had uh, you know in terms of hiring a lot of times we take a conscious call that within the organization there should be a ratio which mm. is to be made Uh, mm-hmm. which is to be maintained so that it is not lopsided in terms of visualization of the feature so how the feature should uh, you know look from different perspectives over time what happens if you are really so what does a good product person means uh, in any context is to understand your user better so okay. for example if uh, uh, let's say female product manager is uh, in front it is uh, her job to not just bring female pov to the table but over time also get comfortable or understand okay how a male user will be thinking yeah. about the product and the same goes for a male product manager to learn how the female pov happens on the app now how we did this was from day one whenever we release something we used to Uh, you know we specifically hired a couple of people for user calling uh, from day one we had this practice that you know we call the user we understand with their permission record the call and everyone in the team mm-hmm. uh, listens to this call see because to be honest i have lived that life in tight to tight city but i have become a urban user right now yeah. i probably will use taiwan app so uh, you cannot just look at data you have to have a chat apart from data you also have to look at user stories so there has been this mechanism since day one where we actually talk to user after every launch and listen to these user stories everyone in the team does this to really understand okay what's the pov of this user we mm. release this but actually did it meet the cultural sensibility of uh, you know a boy user girl user a hindi user versus a marathi user or a bengali user etc and uh, that is the secret sauce or let's say the effort which essentially then directs all the product decisions or org decision or the cultural decision which you take so that's it got it so are you also like leveraging your like power users or who act as matchmakers yes. to actually get some cultural input yes. from them as well okay yeah yeah got it. yes yes and uh, so till uh, like 2 3 months back uh everyone had my and my co-founders uh, whatsapp number and oh used to get <laughs> the, i mean there there are still is there a lot yeah. of uh, i had to separate my personal account <laughs> from the feedback account so it's yeah. we are still very approachable and uh, one of the yeah we are still very approachable and i think that is the secret so that uh, if you identify these users and this is true for every sort of social product company i in my understanding every business or every product is built on these unique user insights yeah. if uh, over time you uh, you know don't capture them uh, you will basically you know won't survive so yeah. i think all these the so long story short the point of how we get the cultural context is to be in touch with users right that that's the secret sauce it's a very simple thing but very few folks do it Got it. Because on the insights which we have made this product, these are available in the open. This is nothing which is yeah. sort of uh, yeah a secret which was only accessible to us. Yeah. No. Um. No. This. Uh. This is obviously. I feel like you guys are building this product on, um, all the right motive, right? Like obviously, you know, you're very conscious of who your user is, and you are trying to understand their voice and capture their. culture to build your product and you know staying in touch with users is such a great way to know whether you know you're actually delivering value whether to your investors or to your customers right like at the end of the day that's that's what's important um so I, i think, think if you build the right product if you are serving the user in the right way everything will take absolutely. care of itself yeah absolutely and i think this is such a huge challenge that you've taken on to actually build a social network for you know bharat as you know you you define it um it is a very very complex sort of uh, problem statement and the way you're approaching it is also 
not straight forward but i you know after having had this discussion with you now everything else is kind of starting to make sense about how you are trying to translate offline experiences truly to an online experience because that hadn't been done till date um you know i wish you lots and lots of luck because <laughs> obviously it sounds like you guys have a lot of work cut out for yourself so at least as you said for the next 5 10 years right um i i do see that you know this will take a while to really gain some traction and even for you guys it'll be a journey overall i suppose right um finally one last question you've been through a journey now in the last few years knowing what you know already what would you have to say to someone who is looking to build a dating app in india today so um, the first is to iterate patiently with data and user stories and there are four keywords here iterate patiently data user stories you need to be you know on top of your game at all the fronts to you know culminate and make a complex system complex is so most of the products in india right now are single use case products mm. single use case products whatsapp you go you send a message you open a video <coughs> platform you swipe up you see all the videos right you upi you enter phone number you pay that's it friend uh, is a very complex ecosystem because there are just so many things to be done now you take an example of china in mm. china you will find there are lots of apps like this like this is in complex ecosystems and yeah. people are people love to use them yeah right so india is on that journey where you need to be patient you need to iterate you also need to break down the product for this user base but at the same time you need to wait because these users will get comfortable over time to complex products the second thing is uh, data driven you need to be super data driven because data yeah. tells you a lot of things but you also need to get to the ground and stay with these users and uh, so a lot of times i feel that builders right now are uh, from you know all these premier colleges in premier cities and they are an urban consumer yeah a lot of times they do not totally empathize with uh, the next billion users so you need to bridge the gap it will take some time their patience is required i also feel in future there will be a lot of uh, builders who will be the users of the product as well mm. and there you will see a lot of beautiful products actually getting created for the market the second thing is in these products you will never have a real world uh, right answer so for example today you build an e-commerce product you will have a lot of learning from the journey of amazon flipkart uh pindodo in china and you can sort of take inspiration from their product yeah but if you are creating something like friend there is nothing which has been created till now so you will not get a real world answer or real world hell yes of your concept neither your investor user no one will actually tell you that is this the right decision or not yeah. there i think you should uh, back your instincts Yeah. Over time, you will have a, a product philosophy of your own, and you need to breed this this kind of product day in and day out, until and unless that is done, right? You won't be able to reflect it in the final product because you also are a builder, and as a builder, you are trying to understand the ecosystem and develop a better sort of decision making game. So. Yeah. i can sense that our team of 10 people has got better over time in taking the right product decisions in taking the right bets of so for example previously our success ratio would be around 5% in terms mm-hmm. of when we took a bet did it actually work now it is more around like you know 20 25% it will still be poor it will yeah. still be poor because this process is like making a movie yeah it is you basically create something and whether user will like or not that totally depends on the user but you can get a better sense of it sure. as you progress in your journey so sure. for the builder only these two things rest all gyan is available on twitter and all these <laughs> books about startups yeah that's it that's uh, i i think it's brilliantly brilliantly put right it almost makes you feel like you just finished a vc pitch and you're like coming here to like <laughs> 
<laughs> give us the same feel but uh, amazing um <laughs> thank you so much for ashi spending time with me sharing more about friend and um uh, you know i'm going to put this conversation up on youtube and hopefully uh, people will try friend and give you some feedback 